Welcome to IIT MA Organized Sangam 2020. Thank you for joining today's Global Leader Conversation with the Professor Mohin, Mohini Sain. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Professor Mohini Sain. He's a distinguished professor at the University of Toronto. He has done many years of uh, research, worked with industry. In short, we could look at him as a, an eminent, eminent educator and entrepreneur. It's a good blend, a perfect blend of an educator and entrepreneur who understands what is needed for the future generations in terms of their growth and relevance to the society. He has three companies under his belt and many years of academic experience. He's very familiar with uh, Canada, USA or North America, as well as East Asia. So it is my pleasure and honor to invite Professor Mohini Sain to this Sangam 2020 conversation with the global leaders. How the world is going to move in the new era of post COVID and in the low carbon economy. In my view, this is the only way approach for the smartest nation who wants to thrive in the next century to come. I want to highlight a few things. First of all, is sustaining life is a fundamental right for, for human. And as a human, this is our obligation to contribute to the sustainability. So therefore, from technology and material perspective, this is our responsibility to take that challenge in what actually we are partly responsible for and to reverse that in order to be in a more sustainable world of living. So first thing I want to address is that how we could achieve it. As we see global geopolitical issues, at the same time, the climate change and its views pro and contra. One thing we have to remind to everyone that resource is limited and a responsibility towards having that resource in an equitable way is the only way we can share our part to the humanity of this world. So how we do that? One way to move forward is to look in the education technology a regulatory policy for each and individual leader of the country, of the nation, how they can use their resources in a most responsible way, encourage the youth and the educators and the business people to maximize those resource utilization in terms of value addition, create economic growth and improve the living. I want to give a few examples. First of all, a country like India, which is very much in advance in agriculture, might find a very linear way to move in a sustainable future by adding 
value to that precious resource they have, not only from allowing people to have sufficient food, but at the same time, the materials they're, they're living after, transforming them in a responsible way to each and every component of our lively requirements, right from the clothing to our building materials, to our transportations, and ultimately to this corporate wireless industry. Now, how that transformation happens will depend how we as a leader, both in the academic world, as well as in the governments and industry, educate our next generation to better understand the need and the technology associated with those to transform into a sustainable form. So therefore, going forward, we not only need those use of natural resources which are available or the waste resources are available to, for their beneficial use, but we also need to develop, first of all, a policy, a legislation, nationwide and global legislation, which will help to drive that sustainable development. Second, the education and policy needs to be transformed to give priority from right from the beginning, right from the school, primary school stage to the higher education stage to educate, to bring people the consensus and also the awareness of build on those sustainable pathways. Your level of confidence and the strength, inner strength, you actually cultivate it throughout your life, give you that kind of, I would say ability to diffuse your stress in a critical time like this. Um, in a societal transformation, I would urge individual to look at their inner strength and build on that inner strength and try to mitigate unnecessary and undesired level of tension and concerns. Because this is one of the key thing which can only your inner mind can drive. You cannot drive from external views. So when you are from your inside, you build your strength you know yourself so well that you are able to drive yourself in a way only where your passion and your motivation put you in a positive direction and your negative energy will be nullified in that way. So my suggestion, I, I do understand that there's a lot of stress going on, but I would say meditation, exercise and keeping your mind focused would be one of the way, even at this stage, to keep you more healthy than what you are today. That passion drives innovation. Passion drives economic growth and mental well-being. So when we were uh, in the early stage of COVID-19, Canadian government took an unprecedented move to mobilize innovation uh, in viral infection prevention area. And one of those was essentially the development, rapid development of innovative mask, disposable masks. The reason it was very important for me as a, as a key driver of, you know, environmental materials or the low carbon materials, I found a massive number of non-disposable masks everywhere. 
even in the early stage of COVID-19. And my question came to my mind that even if that virus remains intact there for seven days and it has been thrown away somewhere, it might have some negative connotations. So first thing came to my mind, how we can make it as a disposable, safe disposable material. Being in the renewable world for about 35 years, the first thing I call is a company who makes papers. And second thing I wanted to know is, is there out there anything which can instantly kill a virus or a microbial at the same time. So I called on to my colleague who was a specialist in plasma coding. And I realized that he has been working on an coding material for the hospital disinfection on the, on the door handles. So the immediate solution came to us, can we use the combination of these two? One is 100% natural, which is can definitely safely, we can dispose after one time or three time use. And then second is the unique combinations of this copper as a cheap, not so expensive material as a, as a remedy for killing rather than entrapping. It would be a unique combination for us to move forward. So within, within 10 days time, actually we, started developing some of the initial stage of our And so we, we took this material, we conned, we spread it, and we started testing. And we found exceptionally good results. So that led to the further escalation of this whole concept and that a lot of new play players came in. And you can see now in globally, there are a lot of new players who are actually looking into this disposable mask development using copper and various other technologies. And one of the beauty of it is the, that this renewable resource being now being used as a platform in place of men blown polypropylene, as you know, which has been conventionally used for this material and giving a fundamental breakthrough in this technology. And I'm hopeful that the next generation mask, 90% will be based on this low carbon or carbon neutral technology and be disposable in a safe way. So it's a connected world. You have to understand that. This is the world of connectivity, right? So you have to have that in mind, whether it is artificial intelligence or it's a digital network or is a FinTech, you, you need to keep that in mind in your back, in your, in your, in your, in your back, in back of your mind that these are the fundamental things which integrates a business plan. So having that in the background now you have to understand what you want to do. So as a technocrat, as a, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, right? So for me, my base is manufacturing. Now I want to manufacture things for the new normal. What are those manufacturing? So why I will be doing the manufacturing? Because this is the fundamental base of an economy. If I do not do manufacturing as a base, I think, economy as such will be based on a false fundamentals, which is a service sector. Service sector only work when you have a solid innovative manufacturing base. Now what you will be that in the new norm, that manufacturing base. In the new norm that each and every product you make today, whether for human health, that's, a, that's our primary criteria, food, which we have to reach out to everyone, we have to keep in mind that whatever we use today, whether it is water, 
whether it is chemicals, whether it is energy, fundamentally has to come from a carbon neutral, a low carbon technology. So if you have that in mind, you have, I think hundreds and hundreds of innovative ideas which comes in your mind and it will be local. So when you are developing a strategy as a young person, you're sitting in an engineering second year class, you start thinking, okay, I'm in, I'm in Chennai, I have a lot of sun and I have some rain coming up. Now, how fundamentally you integrate those resources in your process of manufacturing, then use the backdrop of you know, wireless living, like right, connectivity on the AI as a tool, not as a function, right? It has, it has to be as a tool and integrate that in your business plan in the new normal. When you do that, you not only independent of the resources, which you do not have to import your local resource of manufacturing, but also at the same time, you have a whole gamut of reaching out, outreaching marketing strategy with your FinTech, with your digital world and artificial intelligence. So my suggestion is that think local and reach out global by combining artificial intelligence, wireless technology at the backdrop of your, your own resource, what you see at the back here of your Yes, climate could be an issue, you know, because this is, this is a central part of our discussion. Climate is changing. And as you know, any viral or bacterial infections, it's, 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 it depends on the climate. You know, you, you, you can have a place where it can nurture very easy, you know, bacteria and viral components, right? Because it has the nutrients. So if you, have, if you are really feeding that nutrient in some point and allowing it as a carrier because of our changes in the climate, that definitely has an effect on that. Now, how much that would have, I don't have an answer for you, but definitely that carries a part of our responsibility. Now, how you go forward in terms of a, you know, doing the business at the same time safeguard our life I think is the, is the responsibility of individual, the citizen. We, as a global citizen, we need education. We need to reach out to the people who, doesn't have, who don't have this education to understand how this infection really carries and how you can still prevent that in a responsible way and do the business. I think this is the fundamental challenge you are facing is the lack of that communication. If we have a, a strong communication with a strong leadership to say that with the, with, with, with the unanimous you know, voice that you need to understand that this virus is dangerous and you need to protect not only yourself but but your family and your friends by doing the minimum and what is the minimum you are looking at social distancing keep some some you know distance apart doing your part or keeping your mask and use that, implement that, not only in your business setup or when you are going outside, but also at home. That way, if you, if you, if you convey this message and implement that with a single voice, without confusion, then I think we can go back to new normal, which is a reasonable way to safeguard ourselves when the vaccination is, is in the process of development and still open up our economics in a reasonable way. So it, it, it goes to my core, uh, core value. 
I believe from my early childhood, I actually I was born in Calcutta. As you, I, I don't know if you if you know Calcutta at that time, and I used to commute from home to my to my school, the St. Javier's College in Park State, and I used to take a double decker every time I go, and I see this when I sit in front, I see these black fumes coming out, and when I come home. Though I am dark, I get darker. And I kept thinking, what is happening to me? And I had a lot of, I would say, pain and, and, and sufferings at that point of time. And I realized at that point of time how fundamental it is to have a clean environment. And that drives my future, actually. That's where we are young to, I am today. So, Going forward basis, that became a fundamental drive of my livelihood, my career building. Everything I did since then, I tried to do my part to see how I can improve that part of the climate by reducing the emissions. So since, since, I, since I came and joined as an educator, before that I was actually in corporate sector. I was working in the United States, I was working in Europe, and also in, in the Latin America. So I had this combined experience of, of industrial sector. I realized one thing in my life that in order for us to pull out from that situation where I was at, that, at one point of time, you need two things. Again, you need to believe in you who you are. There, are. there will be always pain, but also you have to know that there will be always also light. And we have to look forward to that day and drive your passion and ambition to that direction and we'll achieve the goal. And that drove me to bring to one single thing. When I became a professor, I didn't want to teach conventional theory. I wanted to be practical. In the first year student, I will take them, put them in my lab and tell them, find out what you did accidental today. If you find something accident, you go back and look at them again and again and again, because you are depressed, because you found something which you are, you are predicting to be found. Predictive science doesn't work all the time. In a transformative world, it is not prediction, it is accident. And we sometimes miss that tiny part of the accident and we take it as a disappointment. We need to, understand that sometimes accident teaches us something which can be a big. And, and because of this accident, we were able to spawn new technology. And I tell you what, when you have pain, you have also the other part, you have to look, what are the other parts at that point of time you can focus on what actually you can learn from that and take that as a teaching to go forward. So that would be my advice and my story for this. And that's how I, I develop. And I'm very happy that my students, they can spawn, they can see those entrepreneurship innovations and they can spawn business. And not only to their part of the career growth, but also create job and opportunities in a sustainable way.